last kind of parting thought, I guess I wanted to um, uh, discuss what we, I mean, you closed Stalker right when COVID hit, right? And so kind of wanted to um, touch on that subject. I know every webinar talks about post pandemic, what commercial real estate is. And you know what? I, I, the 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 factor i think is we don't know yet <laughs> we don't know right. we, we don't know yeah it's hard to predict but for development uh it's a different um matter i think um speaking to developers uh offline for us as well um the the big takeaway has always been they're long in los angeles just overall right in five ten years there's just so many reasons why the growth will happen in the la and southern california area right too many different reasons why. So that's not stopping them from building. They're just making adjustments now, I think. Correct. Right? So like design, if um, one developer, Stephen had mentioned that, you know, they're looking more about um, the designs for their units where they make kind of a semi home office, right? So instead right. of you converting a bedroom, why not just have the amenity of, an, of a home office inside your unit and also uh, co-working sites? Because I think you know, post a vaccine, people are still going to want to work together, right? And, and collaborate. I think that still doesn't go away, uh, you know, given the scenario. So I guess, um, just talk to us about, um, you know, what your thoughts are, some conversations that you, you've had with your developer clients on that kind of like, uh, being bullish on, on LA. So, yeah, so I definitely, um, it's still a very hot market. It's 100 degrees in Los Angeles this week, and it's 100 degrees in the real estate market as well, too. Right. It's, even though COVID slowed down, slowed the um, process down a little, mm -hmm. but once people adjusted mm -hmm. and, and pivoted, mm -hmm. now I'm seeing like the market is just picked back up, escalated very fast. Yeah. And when I'm seeing adjustment, I'm seeing less retail. Mm -hmm. So I am seeing a little less retail, but I'm seeing more apartments mm -hmm. and interesting like specialty developments. And when I say specialty developments, I don't know what it is. It's interesting. So my client, they are planning on building a studio on a site mm -hmm. with some uh, work office space. Mm -hmm. But everybody who's been coming up to me and the new people I've been meeting recently, I have two other clients that are looking for space to build a studio in South Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So I, I find that very interesting. I know it's a couple of other talks with other people looking to build studios because what happened was, a lot of times once the Hollywood shut down for a period of time yeah. and now it's backed up and they realize that they don't have enough studio space yeah. to get these ideas to the yep. public. Yep. And you got places like Netflix that's turning out, you know, things quickly and different process and streamline the process of making movies and television and very even commercials. We've seen that there's a much needed space, creative space for the creative people out here. Agreed. So I'm seeing a lot of more people coming to me looking for creative space. And apartments always going to be held in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. But what I'm seeing interesting is a live work space. Mm -hmm. So like you were just saying, like building an office, almost more like office. Um, yeah, live work space. So it's like yeah. studios like in New York, larger, mm -hmm. larger spaces. So you have no identifiable space, but you can just set your bed up and different things like that. So I'm seeing a lot of live work space. I'm seeing a lot of studios and I'm seeing less retail. And that's what I'm seeing the market is going to right now. Yeah, the studios is, is fascinating. I read, um, you know, Hudson uh, Pacific Partners. Yes. Yeah, they're brilliant. I follow them, I follow them well. I follow oh, yeah, them Victor well. Coleman, the founder. Yeah, us too. Yeah, yeah I'm just big fans. Um, shout out if he wants to uh, be on our podcast <laughs> in the future. But <laughs> so they have that Westside Pavilion, which was brilliant, how they converted that to office, got Google in there and, and signed right. for seven years. And that is a massive office space. So that's a win for them. Um, I saw something recently where they bought a lot of the Sunset, uh, I think the Gower Studios, right? And that's right. kind of a portfolio and they sold 49% of that to Blackstone, which again, I think Blackstone's uh, uh, strategy there was exactly what your uh, clients or your developers are doing too, is they're seeing a need for flex studio space, right? On demand, like streaming is just only going to keep going up. And this uh, pandemic has been an accelerant, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm watching all the titles in Netflix and already going, okay, where's the next one, right? So, right, right. Yeah, I'm not the only one, I'm sure. But so you're right, that, that is a, a huge demand, I think. And, and, and again, what better to redevelop for, right? I think you have a lot of these open retail, even um, there's right. so many bankruptcies going on, unfortunately, right? But I don't think, you know, 
we can only look at that one sided where it's just bad news and there's nothing to be done. Oh, no. that, that just creates a way to redevelop that space, right? For the owners and get the new highest, best use on there. So it's just more of transition. I think that's what I see it as versus, Oh, if there's going to be an end of days for all retail or all business. Right. No. Or, yeah. Yeah. And interesting. You say about that. A lot of the buyers is coming into the market. A lot of investors are coming into the market right now thinking they're going to get a premium. I like, mm, yeah. it's not, I'm not seeing a lot of, uh, you're, you're not getting a lot of discount on yeah. real estate right now. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, we are going to have some businesses that's not going to um, survive this. Sure. And we're going to have some of the big retailers that's not, but I'm already seeing so much, you know, so much like interesting concepts and creative um, concepts that's coming along to do with the, deal with the big boxes. Right. And like you were saying, that one big box can become a studio, a small studio for somebody. I spoke about that uh, on the last podcast too, how I uh, read about, uh, what is it? Uh, Simon Property Group, right? Uh, right. Talks with Amazon to convert uh, the Sears and JCPenney, which are massive spaces in their mall massive. portfolio, right? To be fulfillment centers. And Amazon, I'm sure is game because they've made the best quarter ever, right? Uh, during right. this Q2, uh, <laughs> so good for them. But again, I just, I think LA is, is prime with opportunity and it takes brokers like yourself that kind of gets ahead of that. Understand the landscape, understand their market area, understand what the demand is going to be. And then, like you said earlier, uh, arm yourself with the right tools that the right. developers need and the clients need to go, okay, well, you know, if we could trust that James understands, has our back on kind of using a good, you know, land use report like ours and also some other tools around there to kind of, help them with what they're wanting to do with that property. Um, it's a win-win uh, for both of you guys. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of the big investors, a lot of the investors out here in LA, they have, they probably get brokers calling them on a daily All basis. The then the you have to separate yourself from the other brokers and the utilizing the services and the different tools that I use help me set myself apart from the other brokers. And I like, Hey, you can, I already spoke to the owner. They're willing to sell at this price. This is what you could build here. This is the land value. This is the envelope you could build. This is the estimated cost. And this is the, uh, how you could exit out of this deal. And when a developer comes to me and when I talk to him about that, he's like, wow, um, yes. <laughs> you know, nothing else to do but say yes. And let's go get it done. Absolutely. Well, oh, man, I thank you so much for this conversation. I think it was uh, uh, super insightful. It's going to be helpful for our uh, listeners. And uh, yeah, uh, congrats on that. Uh, you know, tra uh, transaction, but it's going to be, oh, thank you. I can already tell it's going to be one of many <laughs> coming from you. So uh, my, my whole goal is I don't want that to be the largest deal that I closed. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It won't. It won't. Yeah. And, it, will, it will not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Well, thank you so much again, James, for being on. Thank you everyone for, uh, you know, watching and look out for the next episode. Thanks so much. Thank you so much.